Good morning, chemistry students. Here is your final day of chapter six notes. And this is really about making some flow charts. So I would recommend that you start by having your paper landscape instead of portrait. All right, we want our paper landscape, not portrait. And I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how smoothly this is going to work because I've never tried to do this on an iPad before. So we will see how it goes. Okay, Kind of bear with me. I don't expect it's all going to fit on one kind of screen, if you will. So we're going to start by talking about the situation is, is that you're given a name and you're asked to write the formula. So I put a couple examples down here and we will do these examples when we've kind of finished working through our flow chart. So our examples are dihydrogen monoxide and ferrous hydroxide. So the first question we have to ask is, is the compound ionic or molecular? And you're going to want to put this towards the middle and top of your paper landscape style, okay? So we're gonna do molecular first. Now, how are we gonna know that our compound is a molecular compound? Remember, we're gonna know that because it's made of two nonmetals. So what you're gonna see as we kind of make this flow chart is that we are gonna summarize everything you've learned in chapter six in one spot, okay? So is the compound ionic or molecular? It's molecular. It's molecular because our compound is made of two nonmetals. Now, we've been given the name, so we want to write the formula. Remember, our process for that is our prefixes become subscripts. Okay, so the prefixes that we have are going to become subscripts. So we're going to write our symbols in the order they are in the name. Okay, and then our um, prefixes equal our subscripts. Okay, so that's what we do if we have a molecular compound, and we're going to know it's a molecular compound because it's made of two nonmetals. Our prefixes become our subscripts. We write the symbols in the order they are in the name, and the prefixes become the subscripts on that element. All right, what if it's an ionic compound? Again, how are we going to know it's an ionic compound? We're going to know it's an ionic compound because it's a metal and a nonmetal. Oops. Or it has a polyatomic ion in it. So remember, you have 10 polyatomic ions you have memorized, and most of the rest of them either are going to end in an 8 or an ite. So we know our compound is ionic. So then, and this is where I'm going to go to a new screen, okay? So again, this is our kind of ionic compound, remember, is what we just said, okay? So what do we do then? Again, because we're being asked to um, write the formula. So remember, we're going to do symbols. Charges, crisscross, cross 
lowest whole number ratio. Okay, so for our symbols, right, we're going to use our periodic table. And remember, sometimes you might even kind of do these two together, right? So symbols and our charges. So how do we know our charges? Okay, so our charges, when we're given the name, right, either it's a tall column, element and you're going to use your periodic table okay so to figure out our charges if we're if it's an element that's in a tall column we're going to just use our periodic table right so that idea that group 1a has a charge of plus 1 group 2a a charge of plus 2 group 3a a charge of plus 3 group 5a a charge of negative 3 group 6a a charge of negative 2, group 7a a charge of negative 1. Okay, then remember when we get into our short columns, right, it's going to be given to us in one of two ways. If we have a Roman numeral, that's equal to the charge of that metal or it can be given to us with the Latin root and then we use our helper sheet and either it's an us on the lower charged or an ick on the higher charged okay so this is higher of the two charges, this would be the lower of the two charges. So we've done our symbols, we've done our charges. Remember when we crisscross, we are doing just the numbers, not the signs. Okay. And when we crisscross, we use parentheses if we need more than one polyatomic ion. And then we always check and make sure that we have the lowest whole number ratio. Remember, I added compounds overall. Okay. Should be neutral in charge. So their total positive charge equals our total negative. Okay, and also remember our positive ion is always written first. So let's try to use then this flow chart to do one of these examples. So let's do the dihydrogen monoxide first. So dihydrogen monoxide, our first question is, is the compound ionic or molecular? So I need to find hydrogen and oxide, which remember is oxygen on my periodic table. They are both nonmetals. Hydrogen's a little bit weird. It kind of plays both ways, but in this case, hydrogen is a nonmetal. So I know this is a molecular compound because it's made of two nonmetals. My prefixes are gonna become my subscripts. Right, so here are my prefixes. So I write the symbols in the order in the name. So I'm going to have hydrogen first and then oxygen. And my prefix on hydrogen is di, which means two, so it's a two. Monoxide means it's a one, so I don't have to write a one. Dihydrogen monoxide is the chemical name for water. If I look at using this flow chart for my other example here, 
okay, the ferrous hydroxide. So the first question is, is this compound ionic or molecular? Hydroxide, that should be a dead giveaway. That's one of the 10 polyatomic ions you have memorized. So that means it's a ionic compound because it contains a polyatomic ion. Also, fair, remember, is iron, so it's also a metal. Either way gets you to the fact that it's an ionic compound. So now we're going to do symbols, charges, crisscross, lowest whole number ratio. So our symbol for ferrous, fair, we're going to have to use our helper sheet, and that's iron. So the symbol for iron is Fe. Okay, Hydroxide is OH. Now, your charge on hydroxide, right, that you have memorized is negative 1. Fair us, right? Us means the lower charge of the irons. So iron's lower charge, or two possible charges are plus 2, plus 3. So this is going to be iron with a plus 2. So symbols, charges, crisscross, right, just the numbers, not the signs. And I need two hydroxides, not just two hydrogens. So I'm going to write this as Fe, OH in parentheses, too. Now the question is, does this balance in terms of charge, right? Does this follow that rule? It does. Each hydroxide has a negative one charge. I have two of them, so that gives me a total negative two charge. And iron was a plus two. So overall, we would have zero charge here. So that is one flow chart complete, and this is the flow chart that you use if you're given the name and asked to write the formula. What I would recommend is that you take your sheet of paper now and you flip it to the other side. And this flow chart is going to start with, given your formula, you want to write the name. Okay? Now, our first question is still the same. Okay? Is the compound ionic or molecular. And we're going to determine that the same way. We're going to look at our periodic table, we're going to look at the elements and see are they metals or non-metals. Again, we're going to kind of do molecular first. So we know that this is a molecular compound. Again, we know it's molecular because it's made of two nonmetals. Again, nonmetals being to the right and above that heavy stair step line on your periodic table. So again, we've been given the formula. We want to write the name. It's still, okay, the subscripts are going to become prefixes and the second element ends in I'd. Okay. Order-wise, order is the same as in the name. So we don't change the order from the order that the elements are given in the name. So again, we know the compound's molecular because it's made of two nonmetals. We used our periodic table to check. In which case, our subscripts are going to become prefixes on our names. And our second element is going to end in I'd. The order that we write the names of in is going to be the same. The order is the same as in the, I should fix that, as in the formula. Okay. That's molecular. What if it's ionic? Again, how will we know it's ionic? It's going to be a metal and a non-metal. Or it contains a polyatomic ion. Okay. 
Now we're going to kind of go to our next page here. So we're coming down from it being ionic. Now, because it's ionic and we need to write the name, remember sometimes we have to write our names twice. So our next question is about the metal. Is the metal in a tall or short column? Because remember that determines whether or not it might have more than one possible charge. Again, we're going to kind of go the simpler route first. So we're going to say that it's in a tall column. Remember, by being in a tall column, okay, a group A element, that means that there's only one possible charge. So to name this, we're just going to combine the name of the cation and the anion. Okay, the cation is going to be um, the metal plus the word ion in this case because it only has one possible charge. The anion could be um, a polyatomic ion. Okay, or it can be monatomic a single atom. And if it's monatomic, its anion is going to end in ide. Okay. So that's if it's in a tall column. Again, we're given the formula. We have to write the name. We don't really have to be concerned about the charges because, again, metals in the tall column and anions in the tall columns only have one possible charge. All right, what happens when we're in a short column? Now, okay, next then, we have to look, is the metal on our helper sheet? And we'll kind of add to that, I guess. With more than one possible charge. Right? So what I'm basically saying is you need to look at your helper sheet, okay, to see. Um, Remember, there are a couple on our helper sheet that don't have more than one possible charge. Those bottom four, silver, cadmium, zinc, and scandium. So is the metal on the helper sheet um, with more than one possible charge? No. It's, let's say it's silver, it's cadmium, it's zinc, or scandium. Then we combine the name of the cation and the anion the metal ion, and either a monatomic anion ending in ide, or it's a polyatomic ion. Okay? Yes. Okay? The metal is on our helper sheet with more than one possible charge. Again, that leads us to more. So, again, we're kind of coming down here, and we're on the yes our metals on the helper sheet with more than one possible charge. Well, to name it then, we have to figure out the charge. On that metal cation. To do that, we're going to look at our anion, 
our negatively charged ion. Because we know that our total positive charge has to equal our total negative charge. Okay, so when we're looking at that anion, we're going to see what's our total negative charge, how many positively charged cations do I have, and figure out, use that to determine the charge on the cation. Once I know that charge on that cation, now I'm actually ready to name it. I can name it with the stock. Okay. Again, to name it with the stock, I'm going to use a Roman numeral equal to the charge on the ion. I might name it with the classical system, and I expect you to remember to do both. In which case, I'm going to use my helper sheet. Okay. And remember, it's going to be Latin root. Okay. With either ick which is the higher charge, or us, which is the lower charge. Okay. So Latin root and either I'm adding ick or us to it. Then I still am going to combine the name of the cation and the anion. So once I have that cation named, now I still combine the name of that cation and anion. I'm going to have two names if I've come this far because I have more than one possible charge. So that kind of finishes our flow chart. Let's go back to that first one and we had those couple examples. So let's take a look at an example. Let's do... The Cl2O6, so the first question, is this compound ionic or molecular? It's molecular because it's two nonmetals. Chlorine's a nonmetal, oxygen's a nonmetal. So my subscripts are going to become prefixes, and my second element's going to end in "-ide". I keep my order the same as it is in the formula. So my prefix for 5 is penta. Cl is chlorine. My prefix for six is hexa, and this is oxide, because it has to end in the IDE. So this is pentachlorine hexoxide. I have no idea if that compound actually exists, but that's our example. Our other example, the HgSO4. So again, our first question, is this compound ionic or molecular? Again, hopefully you recognize this as ionic because SO4 is one of your polyatomic ions you have memorized, so it contains a polyatomic ion. So then our question is, is the metal in a tall or a short column? So I look up mercury, and mercury is in a short column, okay? So that then means I have to ask, is the metal on my helper sheet with more than one possible charge? I look up mercury. It is on my helper sheet. It does have more than one possible charge. So I have to figure out the charge on that metal cation by looking at my anion and figuring out that my total positive charge has to equal my total negative charge. So mercury was in that short column. It has more than one possible charge. So I look at SO4, and you have memorized that SO4 has a charge of negative 2. And there's only one of them, so my total negative charge is negative 2, 
which means my total positive charge has to be positive 2. There's only one mercury here, so this is a mercury with a plus 2 charge. So now that I know its charge, I can name it the stock system with the Roman numeral and the classical using the Latin root, still combining the names of my cation and my anion. So if I do the stock system first, this is mercury. Roman numeral 2, and SO4 is sulfate. My other name, I'm going to use my Latin, or my helper sheet, which uh, the Latin root for mercury is mercure. And then on my helper sheet, there's mercury with a plus 1 charge and mercury with a plus 2. So this is the plus two, so this is the higher one, so this is mercuric, and it's still sulfate. So those are my two names for this one. So using these flow charts, we've summarized everything that was in this, left, in this chapter in one spot for you. So this should, you should be able to just use your flow charts to do your homework or to take a test or quiz. Your homework assignment is homework number 21, and you're supposed to do page 163, questions 43, and 44. Have a good day. Talk to you tomorrow.